Hello, everyone. Welcome to Word Funk. I am Leon Thomas. I am joined by Austin Yorsky and Johnny Maloney. Guys, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's no warm up. Like as soon as he hit the button, he started talking. Usually, we have like a little like like me, 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 me. Let me get the old voice. You know. Yeah. Rather. No, yeah, I just I I, I I didn't even do my vocal warm up. What uh, will they just, think of me? I don't know. My <laughs> you have a completely so different voice. Svelte and baritone voice may sound high, nerdy, <laughs> scratchy, and nasal or something. Mm. Yeah. Exposed. Can this can this week be the Johnny Maloney appreciation cast? I feel like we've been hard on him recently. <laughs> <laughs> like we've been dunking on the poor boy. I think this week we just be like super nice. You have okay, not been um, dunk- oh, in the first place. You have not been dunking on me because dunking is something that requires skill. What you have been doing is talentlessly sniping from the sides. <laughs> Damn campers. You've been you have been nipping at my heels as I soar gracefully <laughs> through the podcast. <laughs> uh oh, all right, let's spe- let, let's all right, all right, starting in about ten seconds, we're gonna spend an entire minute talking about how great Johnny is. I'll take the first 30 seconds, and then Austin will. And then we'll just go back to what we normally do. And go. Johnny is really handsome. Uh, his hair is great. Uh, I want to touch it, but I can't because uh, it's way over there in Canada. But I'd like to. In fact, when I meet Johnny, the first thing I'm going to do is touch his head, and he's going to think it's weird. Um, Don't he's speak also probably, me. He's, he's, really, <laughs> he's in really good shape. Uh, so I'm looking forward to like a really intense hug when I see Johnny. Uh, also, he knows a lot about computer things, and I don't. Um, it's not helpful for me because I never ask about it, but it's good that it's there just in case. Austin, go. I, I like how you took all the shallow stuff. Like, it's just very surface level body stuff. But I appreciate Johnny on a deeper level. I think he has a really great artistic sense. He's taught me a lot about music. Like, I wouldn't have explored Canadian folk music without his guidance, which I think has been a really strong influence on my my listening habits recently. Uh, also, I mean, we both are kind of pretentious, but I think he's turned me on to some some films and video games as well. And I think we've grown as people being friends on this show and sharing sharing experiences. But stop, if you only no, want to, you only, only want for his body, about, Leon. No, 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 stop talking about how good Johnny's is. The minute is up, and now we'll just go back to what we normally do. So I'm um, going to be gracious. <laughs> and say, anyway, back to the thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Back to joking about how long his stories are. Oh God, he never he never stops. <laughs> he just goes on and on, even though people are still talking about so crab so good. Did I yeah. tell you? Did I ever tell you guys the story about the entire day that I played video games, watched 3D porn VR, and then had dinner at so crab so good? <laughs> that's the most Johnny day that's ever existed. Well, it started a week ago. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Hey, you guys want to know something that's weird? Always. Usually. Do you guys know Spike Lee made a video game? No, I did not know that. It's a thing. I was playing it earlier. It's um it's just a basketball game. It's NBA 2K15, I want to say. It's the PlayStation Plus free game. Don't worry, I'm not going to talk about video games. I'm not going to talk about video games. Um but Spike Lee directed the story mode for this video game and oh. It's it's a very like straightforward like you follow this guy through high school and college and then professional and he has like drama and stuff. My favorite thing about Spike Lee's video game is that the main character's name is Frequency Vibrations. That's his human name. That's pretty dope. <laughs> and it just made me. I mean, Leon won't get this, but I was definitely waiting for it to be revealed that he was uh, a stand user. And he'd be like, behold, the power of my stand, frequency vibrations. <laughs> it allows me to dunk. Like, that would have been very, very good. Um, you create the main character, frequency vibrations in mm-hmm. NBA 2K, and the rest of the characters are static. So I made a kind of me-looking dude. It was a white guy. And then the story started, and I had a black twin, and my parents were black, and... I was like, oops, I, <laughs> I do not think they were expecting me here. <laughs> I do not feel as though this was targeted towards me. And Wait, I just found it Austin, very funny. Yeah. As a white person, <gasps> were you othered? <gasps> <laughs> I know. Now, it feel, now I know what it feels like to not be privileged. It's not good. <laughs> Is that other, they ever heard the Louis C.K. All right, C. so I guess it? now we can go back to talking about things like reverse racism and affirmative oh action. And... No. 
No. Did you ever hear the, the Louis C.K. bit about, like, I think it was like, if he ever gets reincarnated, he's going to re-up on white male. He's like, yep, <laughs> another another one of those for me. That worked out well. <laughs> I definitely feel like that. Uh, I watched a couple of new things this week. Um, brand new things. Uh, those are the pilot for AMC's Preacher adaptation. Watch that. Mm-hmm. Um, and also vaguely comic book related. Uh, I watched the pilot for HBO's Outcast, um, as created by Robert Kirkman, um, which I believe is based on one of his graphic novels as well, but he is chiefly known as the creator of The Walking Dead graphic novel. I watched those two things. Are either of you interested in discussing one or both? Sure. I think Austin just in shock. <laughs> He's upset. All right. Well, what do you guys know about a preacher? Nothing. Austin? I, I know about arse face and need more gun. Okay. So <laughs> without getting I've, – I've got the entire run of the preacher graphic novel, and I've read it a couple of times. Um, it's a Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon graphic novel um, that is based initially uh, out of Texas – the small town in Texas. And it's about a ne'er-do-well named Jesse Custer who returns home after um, his ne'er-done-wells. <clears throat> uh, ne'er-well-done deeds? I don't know. Um, to take up the mantle of preacher and sort of like try and right his wrongs and, you know, uh, uh, become a, a, a more morally grounded person um when in the first episode or so i'm you know like i'm i'm not really sure and because i got the the trade paperbacks not the issues uh he is suddenly struck by some seemingly divine force and suddenly discovers that he has this strange power to basically instruct people to do anything um and they they kind of call it the voice of god but they're not really sure where it's from and uh shenanigans ensue the whole series is kind of a religiously slanted cowboy story this becomes really apparent later on in the story when uh some of the other characters show up chiefly one called the uh saint of killers but we're not going to get into that because we're talking about the TV show. So I watched AMC's pilot uh, pilot episode, 90-minute episode of, of the first uh, season. Presuming it gets more than one. I'm sorry. My thoughts are scattered. So anyways. Um, it's weird. No, like, uh, you know, I I always kind of found the... Uh, one of my problems with the graphic novels was that it took itself way too seriously. Because it's dealing with all these super serious American heartland cliches. This, like, you know, this reformed badass, uh, like, the seriousness of religion, uh, Texas, whom you are apparently not supposed to mess with, um... You know, this, like, westerns, and, and, and it just, it, it seems so... It always struck me as really, like, edgy try-hard. I remember when I tried to get into comic books in, like, middle school, I read, like, Spawn and Hellboy and stuff, and then I saw Preacher, and I was like, eh, seems yeah. a, like a, it seems a little much for me, the kids <laughs> sitting on the floor of this Barnes & Nobles reading Spawn. <laughs> yeah, it, it's really, really quite try-hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hear it's good. It has quite a reputation. Like I said, I I know stuff about it, even though I've never read it, which says something about its influence. So. There's some pretty fantastic things about it. The, like, the characterizations are pretty good. Most of the characters are designed really, really well. Um, and as the book goes on, you begin to understand how flawed uh, a lot of these characters are, um, which was, at the time, not really that popular a mechanic in graphic novels or comics. You know, they they tried really hard for, like, heroes to be heroes, and bad guys were bad guys. But Preacher had this 
sort of mid-reach point where it was like, okay, yeah, we know that, that Jesse Custer is a, a reformed badass, but then we kind of get to see some of the things that he did when he was a non-reformed badass. It was like, oh, you're not, you're not a very nice person. Uh, and the same with like, you know, what, one of the characters is an Irish alcoholic vampire. And he's just this live fast, you know, doesn't care for shit, just violent, nasty, unpleasant fellow. Um, he was probably my favorite part of the TV pilot, actually, <laughs> because they, I, 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 I'm not sure what it is that they did about his character particularly, but they seem to have given him. There, there was a lot more violence initially in the TV show than there was in the comic book. A lot of the violence in the comic book was unusual. Um, yeah, like uh, Austin, you mentioned Ars face. So they tell this in in the in the in the comic. They tell this story about this sheriff's son who uh, gets really depressed at some point in time and tries to chow down on the business end of a shotgun, and it doesn't kill him, but it really does mess his face up um, to the point that in the comic it looks as though his his mouth, even having had reconstructive surgery, it looks very much like an anus. Um, jokes. They well, they drop this character in the very first episode of the TV show, where they're they is, and this is one of the fascinating things about it is that it's probably the most familiar I've been with a comic going into watching an adaptation. Um, I'm still holding out for that trans metropolitan movie starring Patrick Stewart, but um. A lot of the characters that they introduce in the comic are introduced piecemeal, where it's like, okay, at this point in time, the sheriff becomes relevant. At this point in time, his son Arsface becomes relevant. At this point in time, uh, Fiore becomes relevant. But the way they're piecing it together in the show is actually really good. Um... But the tone is so much different than I expected because Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg are not only like executive producers, but they co-directed the first episode. The violence and the gore is so campy and just so over the top and ridiculous. I was wondering, you know, because there's a couple of things that happen during the, the, the run of the graphic novel that are obviously pretty blasphemous because it's difficult to write a graphic novel about the voice of God without walking on some toes. Um, like, for example, what they do with um, the Divine's presence on Earth. That's all I'll say about it. The Big J? <laughs> it's, uh, yes and no. You know. Okay. It, uh, we'll, we'll leave it up to... It'll be in the comments, probably. <laughs> okay. Anyways. No, it won't. <laughs> Leon, we'll see to that. Right. Um, it really won't. But God. Can anything escape your Orwellian touch? <laughs> you monster. Leon is watching you. I'm, <laughs> but, I'm, um, I'm moderating my comments for a section right now. Um, anyway, go ahead. But, uh, the violence is so over the feet. top. <laughs> so, it's such a strange show. I'm I'm going to be kind of fascinated to see how much they get away with. And I'm kind of taken in right now after the first episode. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep watching this because I don't feel like uh, the material has been distorted or disrespected enough to make me disinterested in it. So I also think they did a good job casting Dominic Cooper. Um, the, the Jesse Custer character in the comic book, I was always kind of like, nah, not really a fan. But Dominic Cooper has made him kind of likable and sympathetic, so I'm down with that. And the guy playing Cassidy is good, but we'll see if he can do more, because Cassidy's a little bit more of a complex character than uh, you would be led to believe initially. So that's I believe you. that's really all I have to say about the pilot at this point in time. Um, you seeing as neither one of you guys have seen it, so I give your recap review seven out of ten. 
Thanks. <laughs> I give it seven. I get no, Johnny. I give it eight out of ten. I felt like I was there, but since I don't have any really knowledge, real knowledge of it, I I can't like I don't have a point of reference. Right. But I thought I thought you told it well. Okay. Your review of his review is clickbait. You just went higher, so you get those controversy <laughs> clicks, and so you'd show up higher on Metacritic. I know your game. Look, my comment about Johnny's comments is going to be on the box of Johnny's comments one day. <laughs> Do you guys know about that, though? Uh, people like supposedly the price is writing review scores to be a little bit higher because that way you'll show up higher in the Metacritic rankings. That's a thing. Anyway. I did not know that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, update on me moderating my comments. Uh, I approved them uh, because they were uh, good spirited and uh, involved healthy debate. So, so last episode, someone said I was annoying for interrupting, yeah. but I don't I, think I, I interrupted I that, that much. I let that. Yeah. Yeah. You were fine. I, I let that in because I knew it wouldn't bother you that much. So I just thought it would be fun to <laughs> let that slide through. I did delete one comment today. I, I shouldn't say I deleted it. Basically everything has to go through is held for review before it goes in. And even if it's like really shitty to me, I just let it in because like I said, comments are always good. Um, you, but this you took guy, the bad comments to Obama's death panel. <laughs> you had it censored. It's all good. It's good. Like like people who like strongly disagree with what I'm saying. That's a good comment because that'll get people talking. So that's fine. Uh, but someone, uh, his entire uh, declaration was that I am the devil. <laughs> he says this guy. This this review was written by the devil himself. Don't you know? And then a sermon happened in my comment section, and I was like, no, that's not right. <laughs> It's not appropriate at all. I don't really think um, the devil would be on YouTube. I feel like the devil would be in YouTube comment sections. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. But I sort um, of feel like not... in between, he'd probably be in like executive corporate culture or maybe high government. Mm. I mean, Wait, was this an find... actual... <clears throat> Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. That's not helpful. Saying go ahead to two people, you have to... Awesome, you have to be... awesome, awesome, you. Go ahead. Was this yeah. an actual religiously tinged comment you got on your witch video? Is that what's going on? Yes, yes. Okay. Because if someone just called you a, the devil on some rando video, like, you can probably safely assume that it's, you know, just someone being an asshole. But, like, the, with that video in particular, it might just be someone's actual religious convictions. I was worried yeah, that it was no, a comment right. about your live tweeting of Atlas Shrugged. Oh, shit, that oh, too. Uh, Oh, I got, I got, um, a, uh, I believe they call them a rando, uh, in my, my notifications. <laughs> Did he tell you that you it, were the devil? No, he didn't. Um, uh, objectivists don't believe in God. Um, so, uh, here's the thing. Um, yeah, but isn't, isn't Atlas Shrugged Rand, what's his name? Ted Cruz I, I, and Rand Paul's? You're going to get at least one angry comment telling you that you can be an objectivist and believe in God. Eat a dick! Uh, I don't know. Ayn Rand did, did did not did not, and that felt like that was one of the tenets of what she yeah. was trying to say. And Ayn Rand I also I mean, I, death of I the author. Look, look, I understand. I understand. You can you can twist anything to mean something else you, what you want, but like in its in its essence, that's what it's that's part of it. It's and like Ayn saying, Rand also accepted public money. So I right. I understand. <laughs> I mean, you can you can say that you're a a Christian and also an agnostic, but it's like. And and that's fine if you want to. It just you know that's not really part of Christianity. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the, oh, the point the point I was trying to make, um, is that uh, you know, rather than it being you know someone who follows me and was wanting to see what I was live tweeting about and wanted to talk to me about it, it was someone. Basically, I said the the words Ayn Rand in on Twitter, and someone who searches for that all the time. Basically, found me someone who does not follow me and, and has never followed me and has not, no idea who I am. But it's just one of those people who looks for that for that one term that they always want to talk about and decided to get into a public debate with me. Um, I will believe me. I will have, have what I want to say about it, you know, in more thorough uh, sense in the video itself. But I don't care to talk to this to particular person uh, while I'm trying to do other things. Um, so that was kind of fun. It's like, look, I mean, the, the internet, look, you put an opinion out on the internet, you know, that means someone can come on, comment on it. Okay, absolutely. What did he say? Uh, I don't remember because after this person refused to stop like bitching at me, I muted this person. So I don't know, but, um, let me, I can, let me, I can double check. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, 
say the person's username because I don't believe it because I I I don't like to like um get people to dogpile on uh people just because they were like briefly annoying to me. Never a good um, idea. No, no, it's not it's not appropriate. Um, like when I post, like you know, like is this commenter an ass on my Twitter? I always kind of like block out the username because I don't want to be a jerk about it. Um, I just it, it's, that's just part of my um, catharsis. Uh, but anyway, this person uh, decided to just sort of come after me and says, "Well, don't you know that the government gives out guns?" Uh, and I was like, "What? What? Wait, what? Like, <laughs> I mean, to the army? I guess. I mean, technically, I guess technically, the government does give out some guns to some people once they have proven that they can do it, um, can use them appropriately. They don't always, but still, I mean, <laughs> they'll just toss them out the White House window. It's like, here's some guns." Um, so I didn't, I didn't know what that, how that was related to anything I was talking about though. I'm Someone pretty just... sure they just have a word pad with phrases that they copy and paste <laughs> into people who use that term. Okay. So. That's entirely possible. Um, but anyway, uh, that, that was fun. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure the incompatibility between Christianity and objectivism isn't really spiritual so much as it is, uh, like economic because a lot of especially New Testament stuff is about charity, which is yeah. not uh, good if you believe in selfishness. Yeah, uh, well, what, one, one tweet yeah, I actually Austin, said. Don't yeah. you know that charity is socialism? <laughs> one, Here we go. One, okay, Shoot so, you all aboard the politics train. <laughs> one, one tweet that I made during uh, the, um, the thing there. The uh, live tweeting uh, <laughs> of marathon. <laughs> One tweet I made was um, basically like quoting Jesus, say, saying like, uh, "Be good to each other and don't be selfish and believe in charity." And then ran saying the opposite of that. Um, so that was a thing. Um, I made a fun little uh, MS Paint thing that I rather enjoyed of of um, Rorschach uh, making fun of me <laughs> for talking about my rant. <laughs> I was thinking about you tweeted one of the quotes from it about uh, what like what people could do if businesses weren't regulated. And I was thinking about copying, pasting that text over a picture of um, Leonardo DiCaprio's character from Django Unchained. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Like that scene where he gives that whole speech about uh, like the inferiority of anyway. <laughs> or Leonardo DiCaprio's character from Wolf on Wall Street. Yeah, that There's too. Also the, I mean, <laughs> Leo, does, he plays that character well. Speaking of Christianity, I've been thinking, have you guys ever... Sorry. This is anyway, just the moral no, of I'm the not. story here is, is that Outcast was the show that I enjoyed more. <laughs> also, Outcast did a really good album. It was actually a double album, Speaker Box, The Love Below, which no, everyone they, should check out. This one's going to be very short. All right. <laughs> okay. We'll come it back looks to like it's going to be Exorcist, the TV series, except not the actual Exorcist TV series, which was terrible. Mm. Okay. Um, I didn't know that was the thing. But, um, yeah, if you've ever wanted to see Patrick Fugit, like, full-on whale on a 10-year-old, this is the <laughs> show for you. <laughs> Do you think anyone's ever had that specific thought before? I did. Huh. Yeah. I didn't know that I did until afterwards. Your brain works in mysterious ways, Johnny. Ah, well, you know. So you guys want to hear my Christian thoughts for the week? I love oh, your Christian thoughts. Yeah, these are always fun. <laughs> Maybe someone won't call you the devil. I, I mean... Hang on, I can get my Bible. I've been called worse. Um, have you guys ever heard of muscular Christianity? Oh my god, that sounds like <laughs> the gayest thing ever. <laughs> so I'm gonna take that as a I'm gonna take that as a no. Uh, muscular Christ Christianity is actually kind of an old thing. I believe it started in like I want to say the 1800s uh, in okay, England. Okay, so it's not that gay. Um, it, the idea was it was Wait, kind of what like kind of what kind of wigs did they wear <laughs> if this is the 18th century? Because it might be really gay. <laughs> I'm not up on the hair fashions of the day, but the idea behind it was kind of like the, your body is a temple and like the way you take care of yourself is uh, like a religious observance. So it was okay. kind of, you remember for a long time, people really didn't understand how exercise worked. Um, it wasn't until like, Austin, there's still a lot of people who don't understand how exercise <laughs> works. 
I guess that's true. But I'm saying, like, I remember football players in, like, the 1960s, like, running backs were told not to lift weights because it would, like, make them slower or something. Like, people didn't understand how bodies work. But, like, muscular <laughs> muscular Christianity was, like, this thing that it kind of was, like, you should be more active and, you know, be, be outside, and it's kind of a religious thing. Anyway, that's not super interesting. The interesting thing is what it's become in, like, modern times. And this isn't, like, a phrase. Like, no one would say they're into muscular Christianity. It's just, a, like, a phrase, like, people who study this stuff would use. Um, okay. That's also, by the way, the title of this episode. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to tell you right now, there's no way it's not going to be muscular Christianity. It better be, <laughs> I'm into muscular Christianity. <laughs> um, but, like, when I studied it, like, an uh, example that they would use is, like, um, people who... I like who, it that you studied muscular I, Christianity. I did. I Yeah, I paid the best, u- best public university in the state of Florida to teach me about muscular Christianity. Um, the example they would use is like Tim Tebow because he was in the news at the time. Also, he went to the University of Florida, our arch rivals. Um, but he was like, every time he'd score, he'd like pray on the field and stuff. And there's also like MMA fighters who have like cross tattoos, even though yep. Old Testament says you're not supposed to have tattoos. The, the point is that there's this idea that physical activity in, is kind of linked with religious belief. For or like some when people. basketball players are like. I blame God that we lost. Well, because he didn't pray hard enough. If you pray harder than the other team, you win. Ah, forgot. Yeah, it actually doesn't have much to do with that. But the idea is like, so Jesus was, you know, a pretty chill dude, all thing, you know, table flipping, notwithstanding. It's kind of a pacifist religion. But there are a lot of Christians who are violent people or have like violent interests, and they don't necessarily see that as a conflict. And it's Mm -hmm. kind of this way to reconcile that. Um, in some ways also just also unexamined beliefs this probably plays a lot into it but it's just this weird idea it's not like a it's not like its own thing like no one goes to muscular christianity church Mm. but but it's just uh (laughs) and as jeremiah wrote yeah god has broken my bones withered me up like an old man and mauled me like a bear just for laughs He broke my teeth with rocks and made me drink various bodily fluids before trampling me in the dust. My own people hunted me down. They threw me into a pit, and while I lay there dying, they wrote parody songs about me. Not my best day. I was thinking we were going to go to Jacob because he wrestled an angel. Um, Probably the the original OG of this. Oh, no. Yeah, we we could go to that. I, I yeah. believe I, I spoke about Jacob before as being like uh, the first country that was named after a pro wrestler. <laughs> yeah, I like I like to think of the Bible in WWE terms. Totally. There's a lot of heels in there. Yeah. Um, I, I won't take up much more time with this. I just that was something I've been thinking about recently because living in the South, there are a lot of people who say they're very strict Christians. They like wear crosses and they pray and stuff, but they will absolutely beat a dude's head in at the slightest insult. And you wonder how those people's brains work. And this is a way of explaining that. So okay. just something I've been thinking about. I have, I have a thing to say about Christianity uh, this, this week. Yeah. Um, have I have, but I was wondering if any of you guys have seen the film God's Not Dead. Uh, I feel like I've seen it because I've seen so many people talk about it and tweet about it. And I've, I think I listened to a podcast where they talked about it. I mm-hmm. feel I've actively like I've seen avoided it. it. That's fair. Um, I, it's not the kind of thing I, I would normally watch. And not because I, I would avoid um, films with religious themes. I love films with religious themes. Uh, as as re- you know, lot, there's so many good ones. Um, but I don't enjoy from- being cartoonized as an atheist. That, that that's fair, but um, but I don't this, enjoy this... a lot of things that even other atheists paint <laughs> atheists as being. <laughs> that's perfectly fine too. What I'm what I'm trying to say is there's a difference between say a uh, religious film like say Al Hazard Balthazar, which is a French film that I um, uh, covered recently on Radio Cut, which is quite good, uh, and basically Christian exploitation films, which people which people are call, calling them anyway, or Christian exploitation films, where it's very, it, it panders not only to Christianity, which is, you know, a, a pretty good market, but a very specific far-right condescending subset of Christianity. <gasps> Leon, um, are you suggesting that Christians <laughs> preach to the choir? 
<laughs> that's not even gross. Like you can make good Christian movies that pander, and there are actually plenty of good Christian works of art. Obviously, that, that, yeah. that, 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 that's perfectly fine. Like I said, it, there's nothing wrong with making a Christian film that, and the target demographic is in fact Christians. What I'm trying to say is this is for a very specific kind of Christian. Um, it, it's the kind not even that, like. I, I can even see like straw men and all that kind of stuff. Like the techniques they use, like maybe gross and like oversimplistic, but like, I get it. The thing where it goes like too far for me is when they try to twist it. And like, I know, I know I'm generalizing, but they try to twist it to make it seem like they're the victims. Like right, in, right. everyone wants to that's, think that's what that I mean. they're, they're the underdog and that they're fighting the power. But like, if you live in America where all this stuff is made and made for, like you're not the minority, like you're just not, like all the all the people with power in the whether you're in a power in a company or in a government or whatever you're probably well represented by christians like it's just not yeah. a, a narrative that holds any water i understand no, if I, in a middle eastern country where you might be persecuted but that's the thing that gets me about these not that they exist or that they're biased or that they're not well made all of those things are true but that's not the thing that bothers me about stuff like god's not dead no i, I understand the, the god's not dead is not just you know you know, it's not just a Christian film because most of them are good. Like I said, it's for it's for someone who is a Christian and also is the mindset that they are under attack and that they have certain political leanings that are, let's say, bizarrely outside the mainstream or at the very least should be, but maybe aren't anymore. Um, but but uh, the reason I bring this up is not just to talk about how bad God's Not Dead is. Um, because it is, and it's it's not that big of a deal that there's this one bad movie. I might be talking about God's Not Dead 1 and 2 in a video later this year. Um, but what I actually want to talk about is the fact <laughs> that um, the uh, the producers of God's Not Dead 1 are being sued, uh, basically <laughs> because they broke the, uh, the Eighth Commandment, Thou Shalt Not Steal. Um, Apparently, uh, screenwriters, and I'm trying to get, make sure I get the names right, Kelly Monroe Kohlberg and Michael Landon Jr. filed a lawsuit that claims that Pure Flix, which is the company that uh, David A.R. White and them uh, run, stole the premise for God's Not Dead from their screenplay for uh, an unreleased film. So what's going on right now is that um, there, there's like an infight. <laughs> There's an infight in the uh, Christian exploitation world, and I don't know. I I, I don't. I, I shouldn't have any kind of like um, Schadenfreude about this, but um, I don't know. Uh, I I guess yeah, I can't Leon, feel too bad. Leon, Leon, yeah, Leon, yeah. Yes. Aren't they all just God's ideas? <laughs> See now, it's now deep. you're just deep, being man. mean as, now. As deep as a puddle, Johnny. Yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking, do you guys have like a favorite work of Christian art? I was definitely raised on uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, which is not a subtle allegory, but um, I like that shit a lot. Yeah, I like I like a lot of Christian films. Um... Dude, The Matrix. <laughs> what? <laughs> nah, I'm just I mean, I, I, I mean, <laughs> that takes from every mythology. I Morpheus, know, I... come on. It, it does, but, but but there's the Matrix. You know. The Matrix isn't even my favorite fucking cup coaster. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. I think it's uh, cool to hate on the Matrix now, but the, that movie's still boss. Yeah, I I I, I rewatched them not not too long ago. Um, I have the, a the, personal the, beef with the Matrix. We will not discuss it right now. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. I think the, the the first one, you know, stripping away it's sort of um, sort of over the top uh, grandeur, uh, <laughs> you know, and just looking at it as like you know, kind of a cool action movie with good choreography, um, and you know, still pretty good looking special effects. Um, you know, I, I'd say it's still a pretty solid film. Uh, the uh, the idea that and Johnny, if if Johnny, if this is the problem you have with it, I, I I'm really not trying to poke the bear, but I'm just going to say this. Um, one of the issues people have with the matrix is that it's premise is like provably unscientific. Oh, no, um, that's, that's not my problem and, at all. Okay. Then good, good. Then I'm not poking you about it. Um, no. Um, and, and I'll say, yeah, true. And that would be a big deal if the matrix, like, like its point was to be hard sci-fi. Whereas when I watch The Matrix, I think, oh, you're making a, sp a spiritual film 
that happens to have robots in it. This is obviously way more about this than it is about that. So I don't care. Like if the movie Moon got something super wrong, I'd play like, hmm, that kind of goes against your premise. But when the Matrix gets something wrong, I'm like, yeah, it's not really about that. So I don't care so much about that. That's like that's like the thing, this thing that people talk about about when they say, "Oh, you know, the Matrix doesn't even make sense because blah." It's like, yeah, I don't care. It's not. It's it's, it's about it's about spirituality and it's about punching. <laughs> it does it does spirituality only okay, and it does punching really well. It does um, some pretty good punching. Yeah, you know, I, punching that hasn't aged well. I disagree. That, that should I, be said. I disagree. I, I like I said, I rewatched it recently. I'm like, huh, there's actually good choreography in this movie. They're like they're like actually trying to they clearly try to learn martial arts and do them on screen. Um and and, and although, you know, they're it's they're still kind of like on wires and things are kind of I, just, I just like mean, weird. yeah, that the wire effects have yeah. uh, they have become more pronounced with age because yeah, when I, we first saw them at the time, it was like, Whoa, okay, yeah, I get it. Like the, the camera world, spins. like kung fu, like yeah, all right, right on. But then everybody used it afterwards, and you look back and go, "Yeah, how could I'm I not, have I'm, ever loved you?" I I'm think it's talk- like SNES <laughs> graphics, where they're kind of have like a timelessness to how of their time they are. Okay, I don't know. Uh, what I, I find what, them what what I mean is I don't mean like when Trinity jumps in the air and the camera stops and spins around. I don't mean that's cool choreography. No. I mean like when All the Neo, close-up uh, stuff. Yeah, I mean I mean the close-up stuff when Neo and yeah. uh, Agent Smith are fighting in the, in the hallway. Like, oh, look. Yeah, the like, end. oh, look. They're, they're, Spoilers, they're fight- there's a fight in the hallway at the end. Oh, that's fine. Um <laughs> So no, I, I I watch that. And I'm like, oh, I I sure wish you know when I would watch uh, a lot of action movies these days that the fighting looked like that. And some sometimes they do. Like the two, two most recent Captain America um, films uh, tried to do some martial arts stuff in it. Um, I, I've sort of gone off on a whole tangent about the Matrix. I think it's a kind of okay. The <laughs> the anyways, end. my real answer is a serious mm. man. Oh oh, fine fine film. Uh, um, about religion. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Um, I don't know if it qualifies more specifically as, you know, a Christian film or a Jewish film. Oh, no. Film. Well, it, it's, it's, it's far more uh, far more Jewish than it is Christian, but it, it is certainly a, you know, I mean, there's there's a shared heritage. Yeah. I'll take it. Okay. I, uh, <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, I mentioned recently that, like, the thing I talk about most uh, on my show, it isn't even, like, the things I think I, I, I want to talk about the most, it's I talk about Jesus more than anything else because I just keep picking movies where there's Jesus stuff in it. It's not like I'm not even intentionally trying to do it. It's just that that yeah. is like a, a third of my show. Do you suppose that Jesus is something of a recurring figure? <laughs> yes, I get why. I'm, it's not like I'm just like, like oh, I can't believe there's Jesus. I <laughs> I don't mean it like that. I think I would love to see a Renegade Cut episode that's like, what? Jesus? What no, are it's like, you doing here? No, it's like like the um the epitome of this was I was watching The Holy Mountain. And of course there's like religious references and various all all, all throughout. But like one of the earliest scenes is just the, the the main character wakes up and it zooms back and there's like fifty Jesus statues around him. And like, oh my god, I gotta talk about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> there's no getting around it. Okay, no. I'm sorry. I uh, I don't even know what we're talking about. So the point is, is that Outcast what? is the better show. <laughs> And if you Fun. get an opportunity to watch HBO, you should check it out. Um, it's going to be like the little, most mangled. It's a little sadistic. Sorry, you know, there's a scene in like the first four minutes where a kid just starts like eating his own fingers off. I'm going to make this episode so hard to edit that you're going to have to leave everything in. <laughs> That's the only choice I have left. We are. Wow. This episode has taken a long time. I haven't got to talk about any of the things I watched. And then we have start, questions. Start. Austin. 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 <laughs> I believe in you. Um, before we get to questions, I wanted to talk to you guys about a thing I watched. Oh, absolutely. That'll have take you us guys? Time. Yeah, it should. <laughs> <laughs> have you guys ever seen any stand up by Bo Burnham? Yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah how good. how fucking funny is that dude? No, it's really good. <laughs> he has a new special on Netflix called Make Happy. I think also okay. the one he did called What is up there. I've seen and, what. Yeah. Like. 
I think people think of him as like his gimmick is that he mixes in music with the jokes, and that's like, mm-hmm. yeah, that's cool. But I would say, like to me, he's almost like postmodern in the sense that like a lot of the jokes he performs are about jokes and performing, and he plays mm-hmm. with like structure and expectations a lot. Yeah. And his new show is just so fucking good. It's a lot of it is about um, this kind of self-reflexive like social media age of mm-hmm. living as performance. And there's like a lot of, there's a good, <laughs> I would say a lot of social justice stuff in there. there. There's like a part where he talks about privilege in like a really funny way that I think okay. like basically mandatory viewing. But I, another thing about it is like, he's, he's my age. He mentions in the show. He was born in 1990. Well, I, like I am. And it's like, mm-hmm. I'm so jealous. This person has like, everything that like i want to be in life like he's very funny like very like self-aware and conscious of the world and he mixes like high art and low art like there's just like dumb goofy swearing and shit like i do here but like also like really genuine insight and stuff and it's just like fuck this is like everything i aspire to be in all my creative endeavors and just watching it like be put out there is just the most impressive thing yeah. Um, wait and, wait until you start getting eclipsed by kids that are like decades younger than you. <laughs> I'm sure that's a great feeling. I, I I had a very similar feeling when I was uh, uh, putting together the episode for um, Paths of Glory, and I was I was doing it. I was like, oh, Kubrick was only like 27 when he made one of his best movies, uh, and then a few years later he made one of his other great movies. I was like, oh shit. Uh, <laughs> What the fuck am I doing? Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah, I, I get that sometimes, you know, but, uh, you know, it, it, you can't, if you compare, compare yourself to other people who are doing stuff that you, you thought you might do, um, you'll just drive yourself nuts. I yeah. I am my own greatest work of art. <laughs> Johnny, Body, I believe heart, and, you know, and soul. And you know what? I have what? worked my whole life on me. Mm-hmm. God damn it. It's been worth it. I think it's, so, they're gonna hang I'm, your, you're gonna sorry, hang your corpse in the Louvre. <laughs> oh no, I'm I'm gonna retire at some point in time, <clears throat> and then it's just not gonna be worth much. Okay. Uh, so that yeah, got weird. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more surprised when our episodes don't get weird. Like we've had a couple where we're just like, oh, I played a game, I watched a movie, oh, good talking to you. Next week, chums, and then it's like, <laughs> it's like why do we do? Get yeah. sticky. <laughs> yeah, it's better when they get sticky. <clears throat> so I'm not going to sit here and like break down this comedy special anymore. I just think it's like okay. really important that I express how great this was. I don't know. I, it's it's hard to like because comedy is so subjective. I'd be like, this is funny. Like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it was to you. It doesn't really help me, the person listening to your dumb opinions. That's why <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to be more articulate. But okay. um, I also watched some other stuff. Uh, I don't really have any like deep opinions on it and we're a little short on time. So I'll just skip to the questions this okay. week. There's always more, there's always more weeks. Uh, Rick Armstrong asks, what is something that you once liked, but can no longer stand you Rick? No, um, <laughs> you're probably, you're probably a really nice guy. Um, no, he, he's on my, he uh, is on my Twitter timeline sometimes. And he's good. <laughs> Um, this week we're going after question askers. <laughs> nah, you're Not cool. this one yourselves. Is Doctor Jade a real doctor? <laughs> um, things I like that, that I don't like anymore. Oh, everything. Uh, and, 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 and no, no, that's not even a joke. Literally every, every interest I've ever had in my life, besides film, I I either don't care about anymore, don't spend much time on it, or don't spend any time on it. And that, so, I mean, I'll just go down a list. I mean, I, I mentioned before, I, I, when I was young, I used to uh, watch professional wrestling. And when I say I used to watch professional wrestling, I mean, I used to travel all over the country to watch professional wrestling. I used to write for professional wrestling websites, like semi-professionally. And that's how I got my start writing on the internet. I don't care about it at all. I tried to watch it again, uh, after many years of being away from it recently, I was like, Oh, I don't uh, know. And, and then that was, that was my feeling on it. Um, video games. Uh, I broke into, you know, this thing that we do on the internet, the, the online reviewer, critic, whatever 
community uh, with a video game show. Um, sort of. I mean, not really. Tangentially related was, video game yeah. show. A show yeah. of which both Austin and I were big fans. <laughs> Thanks. Um, oh, you want to hear a horrible story about that? I'll, I'll go right back to this question in a second. Someone like, um, like message bombed me on my uh, YouTube comments and Facebook Messenger um, and a bunch of other places. Um, like, like basically like saying, fuck you, fuck you for not having Heart of Gaming it up anymore. You coward, you fucking coward. I hate you. You should let us all watch it again. You you can't do this to me. And I'm like, it just went on. Look, <laughs> Leon, I really like the show and you don't acknowledge when I tell you that. I, how am I supposed to get my message across? <laughs> no, it was like, it was like not only obnoxious and entitled, and by the way, when I say that word and that word gets thrown around way too much, that is the definition of it. To think that you should just be able to get it from the creator who has said no. Um, but yeah, you're a dick <laughs> if you're listening to this. That was really mean. I mean, it didn't hurt my feelings, but it made me like kind of like the biggest eye roll that I have ever performed. It lasted all day. Um, but anyway, yeah, video games. I, you know, I've played one game this year. It's fine, but um, I haven't played it in like days and days. And I have no real strong interest to get back into it. I probably will again, but it just means almost nothing to me. Um, comic books. I liked them briefly as a child, then a lot as an adult, and then just not at all anymore. Um, like, really every everything besides you know te- film and i guess by extension television because now television is practically on that level um i don't have any other interests anymore i mean i did go to the theater recently and i will probably go again but i will go to the theater about four times a year because that's how often the chesapeake shakespeare company performs a new play um and that's it you know, and that's that's the real that's the real answer to that. Everything. I mean, Johnny, I think you probably should go next because you had a whole monologue on our last episode of Game Crunk about how you, as you age, your feelings about video games have changed. That I felt like uh, was kind of the uh, profoundest moment of our recent broadcasting career. Uh, I was going to go back. a different direction for this one, though. This question, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, uh, cool. telling the truth. <laughs> Big fan of it when I was younger. Nah, fuck it. I can't tell how much of this is like your podcasting persona. Like you've gone like full Andy Kaufman on me. No, nah, okay, all right. I suppose I can talk a little Sorry. bit. I suppose I can I can talk a little bit about uh, my feelings about video games. I mean, um, I mean you, you did just specific you said it, video games. You said it on the other show. If you don't want to repeat yourself, you don't have to. It's just, you know, very simply put, it's just that. Over time, it all becomes very samey. Like, liking a game because it has great controls isn't really special because there's a lot of games that have great controls. Uh, Good graphics. Well, okay, graphics change. They get better and better with through time. Oh, look at the new hair. Look at the new shadows. You know, more expansive level design. Well, you know, we have more memory for larger levels. No, like, the games that matter the most to me are the ones that have uh, compelling writing, amazing art design, good sound design, like, true creative content. Things that, that... evoke an understanding about entertainment or emotion or riddles, quandaries, paradox, art design. Uh, You know, it... It's not just about pressing the jump button and being like, yeah, that that feels like a good jump button. (laughs) Uh, You know, like, it's, it's such a... Having grown up with video games since pretty much right from the beginning, almost at least to when they were commercially available to like uh, uh, to people at home, 
it's startling to see how slowly the medium has evolved. And that's that is why I mean I was talking about this when we did Game Crunk. I said that's why VR kind of excites me because it's a new way to interact. It's a new creative expression. It's new environments. It's a new way of making me feel things because it presents me situations that I I don't have an automatic buffer installed against. I don't have this, oh, well, I'm at my desk and, oh, geez, there's a monster on the screen, so I guess I'm scared now. It puts me there. And my body reacts as if I was there sometimes in certain ways. But my real answer is telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, done with it. So, yeah, so my answer for things that thing I don't really like anymore, I guess, was the question. Um. Mm -hmm. If you say Pokemon, I'm going to fucking slap you. I played a game for you, bitch. <laughs> I love Pokemon. It's it's wonder is endless and its okay, joy is good. bountiful. All right. I was, okay. I'm going to say I, I feel like when I was younger, I had much more patience for uh, metal music. Like I would see like I've seen like Lamb of God. I've seen Static X, Ozzy Osbourne, Zach Wilde in concert and stuff. Like nowadays, like I'm, I'm more into like how, how old were you when you saw these? Uh, like, high school. So, like, five years ago? <laughs> no, that would be about ten years ago. I'm 25. Sure you are. So, the <laughs> high school age for me would be 15 to 18, about. Um, like, I still listen to metal, but it's mostly, like, progressive, alt, um, like, post-metal stuff, like Mastodon, Baroness. Um, Isis. Shit, man. I tried to listen to Panopticon pretty recently, and I just couldn't. Um, hey, no? how, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like, I like ISIS, which is not a sentence you should say anymore on the internet. <laughs> um, please don't take that clip out of context. Um, <laughs> there's, there's a kind of a post metal drone band mm -hmm. called ISIS. Yeah. Just so everybody named, knows. Named after the mythological figure. Um, yeah. The Egyptian god. Yeah, and I would say there was a time I was pretty into ISIS. Like, they don't, they're not together anymore. It's not like a thing that is going. So, it's, um, but like, I don't know. I can't really sit down and listen to ISIS Wait, now. I, I, I just I just came back. And I... <laughs> <laughs> That's way funnier. <laughs> no, I was like, I'm sorry. I, um, I, 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 I spaced for a second because I had to, I had to read. Uh, I like constantly have to deal with shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> I met, and then I came back and like, no, I'm really into ISIS. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Let's do this. All right. <laughs> That's the funniest oh. way this could have gone down. What, what do you love so much about ISIS, uh, Austin? It's like the the. Oh no, Austin is not into ISIS anymore. Oh, yeah. not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, all the key changes and stuff, like Tool. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, like Tool is another. I mean, I like Tool still, but I'm not going to sit down and listen to the entirety of Lateralists. Like uh, to, as part of my day right now, um, shit. Right. <laughs> this is probably garbage and gobbledygook. If you don't have any, oh, idea I, I forgot about. to mention. I forgot to mention a thing that I used to like that I don't care about anymore. Music, yeah, uh, at all. <laughs> Just Sorry. all of it, yeah. I, yeah, uh, literally all of it. Um, God. So, like, uh, I, if there are any edge lords out there looking for yeah. role models, Leon's your guy. He doesn't care about anything. <laughs> No, I care about a lot of things. I Except just, I, I mean, I mean, media in terms of media. I care about things uh, strongly, but I don't. I don't care about anything. Uh, I don't care. I don't care about any entertainment besides the thing that I I, I do for a living. Um, I would like that to change, but my life is bad. Uh, <laughs> and once it once it opens up and frees up, I'll have more time for other things, and maybe I'll listen to a song or something. Uh, or go to a poetry slam. Uh, that would be fun. Then I'll report back how bad it was on the show. Good times. Good. Nice. Um, Good nice. times. Yeah. Um, Next question. God, everything sucks so much. Yeah, uh, go ahead. Everything is amazing. I love just all of this. Just just being here with you guys. Hot post. No, I, I, I like talking way. to you guys. He's just going to say stuff, Leon, if we don't. 
Do okay, the show. Ne- next, next one. Hot Post Dawn asks, are Ooh. there any movies, shows, games, etc., that you find really unpleasant to watch, yet still really like? No. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. I I have a uh, Requiem very for a ba- Dream, Dancer in the Dark. <laughs> uh, yeah? Oh, God. Um... <laughs> I, I, th- I think we might we might have ready to go there. Concept. We have we might have a different. We might have a different idea of what we consider unpleasant. Um, I mean, yeah, Re- Requiem for a Dream is like a tough watch at times, but when I think of like something that is unpleasant, I mean, it's oh, I don't like this, so I stop watching it. No, I think um, it's I think it's like my my answer was going to be like I have very bad secondhand embarrassment, so I have a hard time watching like cringe comedies. I think uh, the, the British Office. Goes, I haven't really watched that much of it. I was going to say It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, which I think has a lot of really talented writers and actors involved, but I find it ha- like unpleasant to sit through sometimes because when they start getting into the, you know, the shenanigans, I start yeah. like cringing my soul inside yeah. of me and it's I make it's un- an unpleasant sit even though I think it's a really well-made funny thing. Water so shut down. That- <laughs> that's just that's just sad. It, it's does. Just like it, those... it upsets me, but it's just so great. Yeah, I feel. I feel I. I may have misunderstood the question. When when I. 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 I if something is sad it, to me is different than unpleasant. Unpleasant for me means like I just oh th- I don't like watching this, and then I, and then I stop. Um, that's that. But uh, yeah, that's I, unenjoyable. I, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. There's I, I there's understand a big difference you. between uh, like. <laughs> The problem with unpleasant is that you find it like the word itself connotes it being altogether an experience that you react negatively to. And yeah. it's unfortunate that that's the chosen word because we should be able to exist in uh, quote unquote unpleasant states like <clears throat> like sad, disgust. Um, that's the anger. whole appeal of horror movies, right? Is to yeah. just be repulsed by it in a lot of yeah. ways. One of the most important things that I learned from uh, visiting a psychologist was that the best thing we can do to cope with feelings or emotions that we consider to be unpleasant is to learn to exist in them as opposed to reject them entirely. Mm -hmm. Because the moment that we say, oh, I need to get rid of everything unpleasant in my life, Mm. we are essentially disabling ourselves yeah unpleasantness can be useful in in some ways um i think it's really like the, i think the way you answer the question is more interesting really than the answer like the mm. way you come to it i find like leon's whole thing is like it's very important to him that he's enjoying the thing like he doesn't hate watch stuff i feel yeah. like that's that, that, very... that, that, that that's sort of what i mean i i i, I subject myself to things that are unpleasant all the time i mean i'm moderating my comment section as we speak <laughs> so tell me about atlas shrugged leon oh no uh, um i'm gonna in a in an episode but the the long story wait. short that's no, good um i'm actually uh it, normally i um I debut my episodes on Monday nights because uh, according to my Google analytics, that is the best time to do so in order to maximize my hits. Um, but I want to spend more time on it. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to try to make this like a big deal. So I'm actually going to uh, debut it Tuesday night. So I, cause I have off Tuesday and I can spend a whole extra day on it. Um, but uh, the long story short of Atlas Shrugged, uh, the movies um, is that um, in awful. addition to, well, yeah, in addition to, you know, just like, you know, philosophically, I have uh, objections and I'll be going into a lot of that in the episode. The movies just themselves, just as pieces of art, as pieces of their things that are supposed to be compelling, are not that. They are just deeply, they, they first of all, they don't look like they are so much movies as they look like. Made for TV movies. Yeah, they really, they really, really do. Um, and the strange thing about this trilogy is that you would think that each film had been made like seven or eight years after the other because they everyone has been recast. But that's not what happened. The first one came out in 2011 and the second one came out in 2012 and none of the actors are the same. And then the third one came out only two years after that. And once again, 
none of the actors are the same, which says to me two things. Number one, nobody wanted to come back. And number two, the budget kept getting smaller and they could only afford certain people. The only, uh, and I, I don't want to give away too much because I, I, I want this to, I, like, but I, but I, I want to say, you can save wanna, it for the episode. I, I want to say, want. I was just, I want to say a few things uh, just while it's fresh in my mind. The only enjoyment out of, out of this besides, you know, making like facetious comments on Twitter during it. And thank you for everyone who uh, participated. Um, the only enjoyment I got out of it was the constant introduction of that guy actors in each scene. You know, the, when when a uh, a recognizable face but not name shows up, you're like, oh, he's that one guy from that one scene from that movie I like shows up. Character actors that they got to appear in one scene or perhaps two. Like in the first film, it's like, oh, hey, look, it's, yeah, that's that, it's that guy. Uh, he was in the best scene in Mulholland Drive. He was talking about the dream. Oh, cool. He's in a second scene and then he's gone. And then Armin Shimmerman shows up as a bad guy. I was like, oh, cool, Quark's in this movie. And then he's gone. And then Robert Picardo shows up for one scene in the second movie. Like, oh, look, the doctor from Voyager. Oh, then he's gone. And this happens like 20 different times. The best one by far. And I don't, re- and again, and this is one of the ones, you know, most of them, I just do not remember the actor's name. The actor who plays Biff Tannen in the Back to the Future movies, shows up for one scene. Tom Wilson. And has maybe, thank you, and has two lines. And, and it was my favorite one because as I watched it, I remembered that in Back to, Fu- Back to the Future 2, his whole rise to power thing was kind of spoofy of Donald Trump. And this movie, this movie series, is an apology, an apology for billionaires. And the first movie has um, two guys talk about whether or not they should help Mexico. And the good guy character says no. <laughs> and I just, <laughs> something, he just really loved that one scene because Biff Tannen was in it. And uh, so I tried to get my joy out of out of the experience as much as I could. But it was deeply bad. Um, I will say this, though. Having read, I won't say all of the book. I read large portions of it. Um, And I kind of like skipped around because I wanted to get to very important parts of it, like the big speech that goes on for 60 or 70 pages. That's good writing right there. I will say this about these films. And I'll try to remember to say it in the episode too. Much better than the book. (laughs) And these films are atrocious but (laughs) they are much better than the book and not just because i as i've grown i've i've learned to that i've enjoyed i enjoy visual media more it's not that it's that they've made reasonable edits the speech in part three where john galt shows up on television to talk to the world about his backwards ass philosophies, it goes on for four and a half minutes and then it's over. And I was like, Oh, Oh God. (laughs) Thank you. Oh, he summed up. He summed up. Oh God. Such a good idea. Cause I was genuinely worried and I'm not even joking because the third movie barely got off the ground. They had to like get like fan support, which is fine. No, Leon, that's the funniest part to me is that the objectivist movie had to crowdfund. No, that's, that's, that's fine. That's fine. You know, How they, is that fine? That's the whole look, thing. No, I, I, get, I, I, get, I get it. I get it. But I'm as personally, as a person, I understand how it may be like contradictory to their philosophy, but I just, I don't care that much. I will oh probably, I will probably mention it in the episode though, but that's to not me. The that's like, wait, you know how the whole American campaigning thing is based on con- political contributions to political parties. And yet one of the parties is built on dismantling uh, wealth redistribution, even though it relies on it for getting its yeah. people elected. 
That Look, to me is like, ugh. It's all bullshit. I understand that. that that's, not, <laughs> okay, that's, good. that's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make about the third movie is because I knew that they had so small of a budget that I was genuinely worried that it was going to start and the whole movie was just going to be John Galt's speech. Because the third movie is called Atlas Shrugged Part 3, who is John Galt. And I thought he was going to talk <laughs> for 90 minutes. You have to admit that'd be a power move, though, right? Oh, oh, God. <laughs> like, I almost would respect it, but I but I would hate it. Um, but instead they did, you know, I think a smarter thing, narratively. Um, and just, you know, he shows up for four minutes, and we're, we're just done. Um, the very last, there's the two things that happened. And uh, I, I look, I don't make jokes on Renegade Cut. They, they, I might be a little facetious and snarky during this episode, but I don't I don't like to like joke around too much because that's not what I'm trying to do. I may make a joke or two because it's hard not to with uh with the source material. But so I, I need to joke about this here. Um there's two things that happen in the last two scenes of the third movie that to me <laughs> just cracked me up. First, um Either I think a CGI helicopter flies past a CGI uh, Statue of Liberty, you know, like right by the arm, like I guess because like, like we're the real America kind of shit, and like as it gets closer, I'm like, please blow up, please hit, please hit the arm. Just I just want you all to this, this to be over. Please hit the arm, but they didn't. And then the worst thing ever could have happened. Um, it cuts to black. And then it says the end. And then at the bottom it says, no, it is the beginning. <laughs> and I was like, no, you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to do that. That's like those movies that end with the end and have a question mark that shows up. You can't do that anymore. That is preposterous. <laughs> At the shrug part three. I mean, the first. Are you sure it's not a parody of itself? Like that it was hijacked no. at some point by someone who's taking the piss. No, no. Apparently, this was all very sincere. Um, this was a definite passion project. Poor people. Um, the first, the first two movies are turds, but the third movie is like a toilet grenade. So, <laughs> like the golden just... turd, or <laughs> no, no. It, it, yeah, what I'm trying to say is the first two movies are deeply bad. But the third movie is not only bad, but like genuinely hard to watch uh, and really poorly made. Um, by the way, the guy who plays John Galt, like, I don't know. You expect like conservative super Jesus to like have this sort of like air of mystique about him or at least be a good actor. But instead, he's just this guy. He's a little pudgy. And that's it. Like. I wasn't feeling it, I guess you could say. Um, I, you know. You don't say. Yeah. You weren't so, feeling it? Ayn, Ayn Rand's it. idea of a suave leading man, according to the Fountainhead, is a fucking rapist. So, I don't know what else. <laughs> what's up? Jesus Christ. That's not a joke. I know. I'm so, aware. Okay. So, okay. I mean. I will have, look, look, yeah. this is just me, um riffing a little bit this is not what the episode is going to be about it's mostly mostly going to be philosophical although i i may again it's it's going to be hard to talk about deeply bad movies without you know just a little bit of snark i understand this you got to get this out this is like yeah yeah just breathe it's 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 um in comes the bad out goes the ridiculous (laughs) yeah um i guarantee the common section is like I said, it's going to, it's going to be a dumpster fire. Um, my, my, you know, regular audience is going to be like, yeah, you're basically right. And then, but the people who just kind of like wander in are going to be like, fuck you. You, you don't get it. Um, yeah. And someone's going to light the libertarian signal over Gotham city. And, and I don't know. Shit's gonna happen. So um, the moral of the story is, yeah, is that Outcast is the better show. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And if no, you have um, to choose between watching Preacher and Outcast, I'd say go ahead and watch Outcast. It's a little more, you know, like gory, kind of like, ooh, we're going for spooky. But I think it's going places. Plus, Patrick Fugit wailing on a 10-year-old. We have to get better at answering questions in a timely Austin, fashion. Don't you yeah, still yeah. have to answer this question? I don't even remember what it was. Me neither. <laughs> what happened? I don't know. What you you fucked this all up? Um, I don't know. Somebody I, just John galted all over the place. <laughs> oh my! Yeah, um, that's okay, though, Leon, because I I John galt all the time. So crab, so good. Okay. Yeah, I I will. I'll, if you want to do another question before we go, that's fine. I mean, unless you're you're pressed for time. No, I have literally all the time in the world. I just feel bad because we got so many good questions. We got like a bunch of really good ones this week, and we never get to enough I get, of them. I have nothing to do. If Johnny, if you need to go, you let no, me know. No, I got, I, I got I, time tonight. All right, let's, let's do more stuff. I have to go. I have to type a brief response to someone being a dick in my comment section. But so, <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna mute my mic so you don't hear me type. But go ahead with the question. <laughs> I feel bad for Leon. He has to do all this manually. It seems like it's like quite a quite a heavy load. This poor I'm man. Sure, he'll lose patience soon enough. Yeah, just put it on autopilot. Uh, EWC asks, I guess me, did you keep watching Star Trek episodes, or is that only for sick days? Hit City on the Edge of Forever, at least. Um, I actually did, because my word means something. So when I say I'm going to watch a series, I do. And I watched the whole original Star Trek, basically. the three, Most of the three seasons of Shatner and Co. And I said before some of my thoughts about it, like, thematically. I love you, buddy. But, uh, it's <laughs> just like thank you saying that publicly. I love yeah. you, buddy. So I feel like I have a pretty good education in this cultural touchstone. Touchstone now. I don't know why that word was hard to say suddenly, but I've seen where the Klingons come from, the Romulans, the Gorn, the Tribbles. I saw that episode where Spock got super horny, which was a lot of fun for me. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I, I feel like I've seen. Did you get uh, the, the, the Mirror Universe? Yeah, there were some super. Bad episodes of the show, uh, definitely. But oh, yeah. I'm surprised at how well it held up, held up. Honestly, a lot of it is still pretty good, and I I see why it's endured. Like the characters are very strong; they leave quite an impression, and they have a really fun dynamic. Like I like, you know, Spock, McCoy, Uhura, um, just uh, Scotty, and like I like these characters, and I'm I'm glad I've seen where they're from and all the the like various adversaries they faced. I feel like the only one I'm aware of now that I haven't seen is the Borg, which I understand comes in the next generation. Yeah. So once I get there, I'll, I'll be like, oh, okay, now I know Star Trek. Like, I'm, I've gone from zero to 60 on this, and I think it's pretty cool. Pretty my, main, my main criticism of this Trek I've seen so far is every episode is an hour, and they very rarely have an hour of stuff to say. <laughs> there's There's a lot of, like, tracking shots of just people walking around corridors yeah there's a lot of people pushing buttons and looking in viewfinders and looking out windows like it feels like it's pretty fucking 60s sci-fi yeah i don't know if i've ever talked about this before but like 2001 a space odyssey is like like a landmark classic film that everyone loves and i've seen it but i would not watch it again unless i had to because there's a lot of that like it's it's gorgeous but there's tons of scenes that are just like hey look at this thing just look at it for a while. You looking? Looks pretty good, right? Like, it has uh, very little momentum. I think it was just because the effects were so impressive for the time, and Star Trek feels like that, too. It's like, hey, we built this set. Check it out. What do you think? I'm going to hold on this shot for another 20 seconds. You into it? And it's just like, wow, that would not fly in modern TV well, that's, making. No, it's weird, because one of the things about about that kind of science fiction like film and television making is that it creates lore Mm -hmm. where somebody like goes to a panel and they're like (laughs) weep whoop 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 and now you have to think of a whole backstory for that machine (laughs) (laughs) yeah pretty much I mean Star Trek is weirdly unique in the sense that of all the science fiction universes that exist they have like technical manuals there's like Starfleet Academy cadet books. You know, Klingon is a language. Mm-hmm. It's it's this weird. I guess that's probably a product of it having endured for so long. Because if if Star Trek was just a thing that lasted for three seasons back in the late sixties, 
and then disappear completely. We just have these scenes where people like you know press blinking lights asynchronously. I go, like the little the computer Ooh. slot that it's Spock a, is it's always It's a carbon into. imbalance, sir. You know that fucking it's like a, a like a, a periscope but facing downwards yeah. and it has like a yeah. slit. He's always looking in it. That that thing trips me out. I love it. Um, my another problem I said yeah the pacing and, and such the cinematography the other main thing that bothers me is there's a lot of plots that are solved because the aliens are magic like that happens a lot or it's just like oops we're actually so beyond your grasp we're essentially gods we've teleported your ship 12 star systems lol like I could do without like I like I knew Q was a thing right I haven't gotten to Q but I know he's a thing and I, I get like a part of Star Trek but the, I'm not, the thing I'm is, not the into Q it. is actually a kind of a charming one of those. Mm-hmm. He's puckish. But it almost, it, like, you know, people always say, like, Star Wars is fantasy. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Star Trek is the sci-fi. But, like, Star Trek has fantasy elements. Some of these, some of these aliens are just magic. Sure. I mean, so. I, I mean in, in the uh, early series, yeah. Okay. Totally. Um. You're, you're, like I said, that, that, the reputation of Star Trek as, um, harder sci fi. Yeah. You know, I mean, maybe for its time it was, but I think, I feel like a lot of that comes from later stuff. Okay. The movies yeah. and, uh, yeah. the next generation sort of onward. Right. Should I watch the movies before I start Next Generation? I've, I've I'm I done would. with the original. Okay. Oh, are you completely finished the original series? I, I didn't watch every single episode, but I watched the whole first season and then I looked up, like, what are the important episodes from seasons oh, two and okay. three? Okay, so, I've seen what I, what I feel are the the important ones. Though. Yeah, okay. I'm down with um, the Cole's notes. Yeah, the um the problem with the, the movies is that if yeah. you're basically if you're in for a penny, you're in for a pound. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, you can watch all of them except five. Five doesn't relate in any way to anything else that happens in any of the other. Yeah, movies. so sorry, Nor, you can skip it's, it's one. Also, it's not. It's also just not very good. <laughs> By the way, oh, but but Austin. If yeah. you didn't, if you didn't like 2001: A Space Odyssey for those reasons, you might have similar problems with the first Star Trek movie. You totally will. So yeah, just letting definitely. you know that ahead of time. But I liked. I mean, I liked 2001 the first time I saw it when it was new to me. I just okay. find it hard to rewatch. So hopefully, I'll make it yeah. through the first Star Trek unscathed. That's no, no, you won't. <laughs> okay, this has not been a successful lightning round. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. You want to? You want to just hit hit them? Hit a bunch of them real. That, I, I mean, I'm ready to do that. Let's. Just, I want to do the good ones. I want to do good ones. Yeah, I'm just, here. Just, I'm we, we 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 all get like a few seconds on each one. Go. Okay. Do it. <laughs> I'll I'll, uh, I'll start. I'll I'll answer first, then Johnny, then Austin. We'll okay. Just go in that order, and then we'll just know. Yeah. What to do. All right. That that's not going to work for some of these questions. But just do it. Any, do it anyway. Okay. Michael Keenan asks, "Do you or Johnny have any Baltimore stories of your own cities?" Okay. Um, not me. Go. Yeah. Us, uh, Johnny, go. Um. <laughs> Uh, this this pressure does wonders for improv. It's my just favorite. Leave, leave, Not really. Go, uh, for the most part, I have a tendency to uh, have a bit of a homebody. I come home, I cook my own stuff, I go to the grocery store, I buy weird shit that you've never fucking heard of, or if you have, you don't know what it looks like. Like, you've probably seen okra on a menu, but I'll bet you don't know what an okra looks like. I buy fucking <laughs> okra. Um... <laughs> I water my own plants on the balcony. Eh, I go to Kung Fu. I come back. Eh, mm, you know, sometimes I get these like weird things that happen to me, but everybody does. I don't really know that Vancouver is a Baltimore city so much as it is uh, a, 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 a yoga pants city <laughs> in just about every social circumstance you can imagine. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let, let's go to the opera. Do you think I should wear these? Whatever. Okay. Austin, go. I mean, I live in Tallahassee. It's a college town. Most of the stuff going on is just drunk dudes being jerks, yelling shit out of car windows. So that's not super interesting. And I, I think I've told a lot of stories about growing up and my weird ass upbringing. So like there are quote unquote Baltimore stories in there. Like I told about, I found bones in the woods and stuff. Like there's, there's shit I like I've chocolate about. milk story. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that one. <laughs> like I, I have like weird ass stories, but, um, I can't think of any off the top of my head that I haven't already told. That's the thing. I've been podcasting for like five years now, so I feel like I've burned most of them of from my past, and like there's not many new ones. So. We have a rich history, Austin. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes too rich. Um, Hector H. asks, ever consider bringing guests to Word Funk? Nope. No. Next. <laughs> well, I, you don't Once. want to elaborate? Uh, okay, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just saying, because, I mean, this show, like I feel like the – 
the pull of it is that it's just our three weird lives bouncing off each other. Right. Like in Game Crunk is a show we built around guests, kind mm. of. So it's just like a different uh, dynamic. Game Crunk is about games and how people relate to games. But and Word this Funk is specifically is... about Austin, Johnny, and Leon. Word so Funk is, you... is the weird triumvirate. Mm-hmm. So I, this isn't the kind of show. Also, I don't know if you guys have ever listened to an interview uh, podcast where there are, there isn't a rapport between the people and it gets like super awkward and bad. Um, it, it's actually kind of hard to interview people. You, or, like, you have to have a good interviewer yeah. if you're going you to do be... that. You have to be good at it. I recommend um, Giant Bomb Presents. Austin Walker does a series of interviews with people, which is really, really good. That's the only interview podcast that I can really uh, stomach. Um, Next question. Uh, Jade, our doctorate in residence, asks, any plans to include fan favorite Bozog in season two of Dice Funk? Hey, where Um, is Bozog, Austin? (laughs) uh, Didn't we kill Bozog recently? No, no. Bozog went missing. Yeah, on the on the right. side of a milk carton, I believe, was the last oh. we saw of Bozog, uh, yeah, as, as canonized art. by Becky. Um, I remember, I worry about running bits into the ground. Maybe it's just the way my stupid self conscious brain works. But we did a really popular bit on Dice Funk called like "Is it smarter than Anne?" and like everyone was super into it. And then I just stopped because I worry about people getting bored of stuff. But um, I've definitely considered bringing Bozog back. I just don't want it to like lose its funniness. Okay. Um, we'll see. Um, do, do, do. It's always better Which, to save a good bit for the right yeah. time. Exactly. It's all about timing. Uh, Blake Schwartz asks, if you could take any existing media with a male protagonist and change it to a female protagonist, which would you choose? All of them and watch the Twitter burn. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a better answer than the real one I was going to do. Good. I, I've talked before about how 99% of media, you can just switch all the genders arbitrarily and it doesn't matter unless this thing, the work is specifically about something like reproductive rights or pregnancy or fatherhood or masculinity, something that is biologically gendered. Um, okay. But I think the, the exceptions would be interesting. Like I, I want to see a Last of Us where Joel is, is a mother figure instead. I think that might be interesting to explore. Um but I think for most things, it doesn't matter because gender is just performative and arbitrary to begin with. And it's really just what the writer brings to it that makes it important in the first place. Samurai. I want to see is a that... samurai movie. Oh, just a samurai movie. I was like, yeah. is there a movie called Samurai? No, no, no. I want to see a samurai movie. Because mm. they've done – they've they've changed up like the American equivalent, Westerns. They've done like, you know, Lady Gunslingers and things like that. Yeah. I'm not sure I've ever seen – uh, a woman samurai movie. The Assassin. Uh, I'm not sure if it qualifies as a samurai movie, but it is a. No, they've um... done ninja movies. What's Kill Bill? It's mm. a Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that, that is what it is. The uh, The Assassin is a, is a Chinese film like a couple of years ago about a woman who sometimes uh, skewers people with a sword. Um, but it's also about a, a lot of other shit. Yeah. Um, I mean, most good sword skewering movies are. <laughs> Yeah, you don't. They're not like you know. Welcome to the sword movie. Hey, check out my sword. That's a pretty nice sword. I know. Do you want to get stabbed by it? No. Well, you're gonna. Oh, you got me. The end. It's a shame this this episode is definitely called muscular Christianity because welcome because welcome to the sword movie would be pretty good too. Uh, I may call this muscular Christianity uh, colon welcome to the sword. (laughs) I will. I will take it. Okay, uh, let's next one. Uh I'm gonna say Zerpt. It's like X I R B T T. Zerpt S. Oh, I knew Zerpt. I yeah. know Zerpt too. Zerpt is pretty cool. Also, there's a police uh, siren, it's tripping me out. Uh yeah. asks, There always is. <laughs> Baltimore. <laughs> uh favorite animated movie and why? Uh changes constantly, the little mermaid at this very moment in time. I think we talked about this. I said, "A beautiful day is such a beautiful day" by Don Hertzfeld. I think we said. I think the question we got before was favorite non Disney animated. Ah, mm. yeah. Well, it's still my favorite animated yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah, that works. That still counts. I, my nostalgia wants to say Aladdin. Um, that's hard because I know it's not objectively the best, but I think it's my favorite. Yeah, it didn't even show you the world. <laughs> it showed that- a lot of. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Johnny. I'm sorry. I'm, but during uh, the, the the song, they go to a lot of places that are clearly not in Agrabah based on the landmarks. I recently rewatched Aladdin. Uh, 
and yeah. they know this. But to, I mean, that's to, not the course, world, is it? It's that's a, it's select a lot of locations it. around. Well, they just because you're Antarctica. random sampling, Leon, <laughs> is at uh, various locations. That doesn't mean you've seen the whole thing. Look, fuck off with this newbie bullshit. You, 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 <laughs> so, yeah, you know what? Next, next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is an insult in there, and I heard I it. You, just, yeah, I, I, I decided I decided to scale it back because it sounded really gross in my head. Um, yeah. th- next question. I love you. We good? We good? Yeah. Oh yeah, pretty good. <laughs> we cool. Yeah. Uh, Alexis David asks, should you be courting someone? Which dish would you cook for a romantic meal? No takeout, no restaurant. I can't do Pass. this quickly. <laughs> That's the most This, this is answer. not a lightning round question for me. I can't do this. I know. He's like, I'll send you a PDF of the menu. <laughs> What's the that's, email? That's address. not something I can answer quickly. I'm sorry. Pass. I could. I can cook certain pastas, and I can cook breakfast food, and I can cook a few other dishes uh, because I, I learned to for you know living alone for a long time. But I I'm not I'm not a great cook, and you know I'll, I'm going to relearn some stuff soon though. And it would be it. lamb based. I, okay, that's like that's all I can you say. Just, lamb. You can just say, you can just say lamb. Okay, uh, yeah. Austin. Any thoughts? No, that's not good enough. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Austin. 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 <laughs> I was going to say, I mean, you should cook the dish you're best at cooking, Deep right? Breath. If you're trying to make the best impression. Deep breath. Sure. But like, if you're, if you're like, hey, uh, yeah, here's a hot date, but the best thing I know how to make is scrambled eggs, it's weird. Uh, if you, if it's for dinner. Or um, you should find out what they like. Like, are they into spicy food? Do you can like make really good fish? savory crepes with scrambled eggs. Oh, God. All right. <laughs> This feels like a more like I don't know if one one answer fits all here. If the best but, thing you can make is like a birthday cake, it's weird for a date. Is all I'm saying. Is, yo, if if she isn't into your birthday cake, if she, <laughs> just breathe. Just breathe. You can't. If you can't handle me at my birthday cake, you don't deserve me at my filet mignon. Okay. <laughs> what would you pair with that filet mignon, Austin? <laughs> Ecto cooler. <laughs> Next question. Uh, yeah, uh, that about two more, and then let's go. This one's personal. I don't know if you might want to answer this, Leon. Should I try it, and then you can cut it if you don't like it? Sure. Uh, Next. Okay. Um, right. A. David A. asks, would Leon ever consider writing a screenplay about his time in Baltimore? That would make I feel for like a I already good, have. That would make okay. a good dark comedy. Haven't I already? Is that what yeah. this show is? Kind of. I mean, we could adapt it. They, you know, what would but, we call but, it? It'd, it'd be like w- words and sights funk, like visual and sound funk. Like how do you? We, adapt we would it? have to. We would have to get Don Hertzfeld to nah. do the visuals. Nah, we would call it Baltimore. <laughs> All right, I'm not enthusiastic about this podcast right now. <laughs> All right, any, anything you guys? Unless there's like a really great question uh, left in in the pile. Uh, anything you guys want to say before we go? No, nah, I think we, we question Austin. No, nah, we've kind of hit the joke questions at this point. Like the JJ Espinosa asks, "Do you prefer Taco Tuesday or Existential Crisis Thursday?" Um, as a modern man, yeah. I like to do both of those days together because yeah, I don't have every, the time for one or the other. It's every day is Taco Tuesday. If you're if you're trying hard enough, every day can be Taco Tuesday. Wow, that's really kind of profound, Austin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, li- um, I like I would joke like questions. To say, sorry, Austin. No, I was just saying I like joke questions, but that's about, about what we're down to. So, okay, I would like to say. Yeah, that it's Bachelor Week for me. Um, you watching Stephanie, the Bachelorette? What, no, what Stephanie is at a psychological conference in Seattle, so I'm on my own pretty much for the rest of the week. So I apologize for all the naked selfies I'm going to be putting <laughs> up on my Twitter. Uh, don't apologize. I think that's what people go there. That's the good content that people are there for. I just, you know, I wouldn't have the affirmation. But you guys helped today. Thanks. Thanks, guys. You're welcome, guys. All right. 
And I guess I just want to say, uh, I don't know. Leon, do you have a final statement while I think I'm mine? No, I have to respond to some got one in my chat who doesn't understand that there are language filters and <sighs> that's a full-time job for you can't you just let the filters do their thing look i try to look this is a business and i'm the only employee <laughs> so that's just the way it is well <sighs> as the boss leon you better tell your employee to get his fucking shit in gear uh he's really lazy no he's not lazy he's just tired um, which is different. Um, well, I'm glad you're being so sensitive to his needs. Mm. You know what you should uh, do about your comment section, Leon? What's up? You should hire Bozog to moderate your comments. <laughs> Bozog needs work. He's been locked in his basement for months. Please, my family's starving. Look, Bozog. You were the one who chose to go off the grid. Baby.